Everyone on the Earth, Mars and Luna, looked up at the sky, all with similar thoughts in their minds. What just happened? Day or night, everybody noticed the shift in the sky. How the deep sky went from black with twinkling stars on the night side, to a swelling of orange with random, brightly shining objects, much larger than any star. How the sky turned from its bluish hue to more of a green coloration. The monsoon noticed it the most, though. It was the people between planets out in space. The entirety of space seemed to shift in mere moments, surrounding them from inky blackness to bright orange light coming from every direction. After the first few moments of calm, though, panic ensued. After a day of riots and looting things finally calmed down, as the public broadcast was sent out across the worlds. People of the United Soul States, we have discovered that our entire star system has moved into another dimension. We have scouts going out to the heliosphere now to go and try to see what might have caused this. The sun's heliosphere seems to be keeping that orange gaseous substance out of our solar system, so whatever it is, there is no need for alarm right now. We have our top scientists and researchers in the right fields looking into this day and night. Please remain calm and continue as normal. There is no threat present right now. I repeat, there is no threat present right now. Weeks pass, and everyone gets used to their new normal, and how water has seemingly turned an emerald green colour, and computers seem to be just a little faster. This is when the second announcement came out. People of the United Soul States, we have discovered the cause of our shift to this dimension. At the edge of the heliosphere, all around our solar system, on the inside of it, are hundreds of thousands of temporal emitters. We seem to have been sent into some form of subspace, and then somehow in this space teleported out between the jump. This appears to have landed us in an entirely new dimension, with minor changes to physical laws. We have samples of the orange smoke outside of our solar system now, and recognise it as a pure element of this reality. It is highly toxic to all life in the solar system, but really, won't change that we just need airtight ships to travel outside of our solar system in the vacuum. Well, not so much a vacuum anymore. We have also learned that this dimension has its own, almost mirrored, periodic table. The laws of this reality are mostly being separated out from our own by Sol, our home star. We have no idea how it's keeping physical laws out, mostly. It lets in a couple, but they are not harmful to us. In fact, they seem to be helping us. Light speed is a little faster here, making our computers more efficient, and the way water molecules bond seems to have been adjusted. This made our water essentially the spring of immortality. We have not even the foggiest idea how or why, but people who haven't drunk the new water are still aging normally, but the people who do drink it, all aging in their cells has ceased. Even if it's only a single glass of water, our raging has stopped, and there has been a notable increase in healing with people who have drunk it. We have gone from every scientist available studying this, to agreeing that anyone who makes a contribution will be rewarded with a thousand credits. In short, we have been banished to a dimension, our entire solar system. In this dimension, the universe wants us dead, our star wants us alive, and we have become effectively immortal. More time passes, and slowly, more and more discoveries are made. People become wildly rich from consecutive discoveries, and humanity slowly progresses forwards at a rapid pace. After several months, a new announcement is made. People of the United Soul States, we have finally mapped out a periodic table for this universe, so let's everyone enjoy a free beer at the bar, on the Seoul Central Government of course. We also recently discovered that many of the elements here want us deader than dead. A few though, a shining few, have some unexpected effects on humanity. One of which, that has been named <sighs> Big Brainium, has the effect of forming three times more interconnection in our minds than baseline. The effect is permanent and made even the dumbest Senate staff member able to solve the old Roman hypothesis in a matter of hours. Another increases our healing factor, 
We can now lose eyes, arms and other things, and after a bath with a single drop of the stuff in an hour, we'll have them back. Finally, the orange gas. When refined and processed, instead of trying to dissolve our flesh, we'll reinforce it. The limit is the human mind needed to protect us from our own full strength are effectively gone now, and we don't need them. This dimension has proven to not only be lethal for us, but seems to have brought humanity to a whole other level of existence. In the following months, I look forward to the progress we will make in this new home of ours. As months pass and give way to years, progress advances at an exponential rate, and after a decade, another announcement is made. People of the United Soul States, today, we have done it. We have figured out long-distance FTL technology. We even figured out teleportation between portals. Turns out we don't need matrioska brains at all. We can use quantum shenanigans to have entangled particles remember all of our data and send it from one superposition to another through some good old tunneling. With our new minds, this is simplicity itself, but wow, if it wasn't under our noses this whole time. A secret government project launched the first long-range FTL ship out to one of those large glowing dots in the sky. We found out that those are stars in this dimension. Well, not quite. They are each a heliosphere of a star, and every one of them is picking and choosing and letting specific laws of the area between them to go inside of their system. The laws in the orange gas that make up the void now are strange, but not a threat to biological life at all inside of our ships. They are wildly different from our own universe, but each heliosphere here seems to be its own little micro-universe with its own laws in this place. The one we sent our people to is also safe for life. It would seem our biology from the Soulverse is pretty robust. We can survive wildly different physics, and our body's natural bioelectromagnetic field keeps all of those pesky deadly law changes out. We are, in essence, walking stars that can, when we reach that point in tech, travel the multiverse and keep our laws to ourselves. In other related news, we figured out how those devices that banished us here worked. We can go home to the Soulverse now, if we so choose. So, humanity, do we want to go back? Before you vote yes or no, though, there is another option. We could stay here for another estimated ten years. In this time, we would send out terraformation drones to find a suitable star in the old universe to be New Earth and keep this solar system here. We could keep our little slice of heaven and have a 24-7 public portal system to go home. Finally, and lastly, we have discovered a fun new element here inside of the new star system that gives us ionics. But you'd probably guess that since I'm sending this message to everyone's heads right now. <laughs> A large-scale vote is put out, and humanity decides to keep Sol where it is, and simply build a new Earth in their original universe to go to and from. The project gets put underway, and another announcement is made. People of the United Soul States, like many of you have theorized, we were banished here by another race in our old universe. Like you guessed, we know who did it. We found their branding logos all over the devices that did it for Pete's sake. Now while it ended well, and we all became pretty much living gods in our own slice of heaven, I'm personally kind of angry that they banished us to another dimension. I'm also pretty sure they did it to try and kill us all, since the orange smoke pre-processing is highly lethal to all forms of life, carbon, silicon or cobalt. Clearly nobody has ever been sent to this universe and survived, we found many rogue planets in the gas that are made of elements from our original universe. It seems like whoever did this has done it to other races, and has never heard back from anybody sent here. We were banished to be killed and destroyed, but we, I guess, were too spread out in our solar system, so they sent the whole damn thing. Good for us that they did. Since we got sent with Sol, the laws here didn't kill us all, and the solar winds pushed the gas out of the way so fast it couldn't even bother us. Our planet's magnetic field was kept it out too, but by looking at the other planets, we can tell that this was temporary. So when we get back, do we thank the aliens who banished us? Take their heads in a war of revenge, or just give them a slap on the wrist and tell them not to do it again? 
another large-scale vote is put out, and humanity ultimately votes to banish every alien homeworld from any race who helped banish them. No star for them, though. Can't go giving them a chance to survive, after all. This dimension is human only, by law. Captain Natch slips down into his chair in relief as he says, Good work, crew. We managed to banish the whole system without being discovered. That was too damn close for comfort, though. How do we not notice these wildly dangerous things until this far into their development? Seriously, a gravity well like that? Eating poisons and acids for flavour? And their strength factor? Why? Just why? Whatever. We managed to banish the humans into Dimension X. We won't ever see them again. Somebody send a message back to the Core Worlds. We got the humans. They are banished to Dimension X star and all. On a personal note, I look forward to our bonus when we get back home. This mission had way, way too much risk involved and I plan on retiring. I'm authorizing the unlocking of the inebriates for the next standard day too. We all worked hard here and we deserve to celebrate. 30 years later, Council's prime world in orbit around Sagittarius A. An image has been projected into the room of a star in what humanity called the Orion Cluster. The entire chamber is deathly silent as a general speaks at the front. Council, this recording was taken five standard days ago. A freighter was making its way out to the edge of one of the galactic arms for some rare materials that cannot be found near the core. With the human system removed, there is an amazing little shortcut through that area now. However, when the ship stopped at a nearby star system to refuel at a gas giant, they noticed lights on one of the rocky worlds. This usually means sentient life, and so the ship made its way there to assess the race. To the utter horror of the crew on board the ship at the time, they found humans. We banished those wildly dangerous apes to Dimension X 30 years ago, in the largest banishment ceremony ever done. Yet even after sending these death monkeys to Dimension X, which nobody has ever returned from after millions of world banishings, they came back. Not only did they come back, they did so stronger than before, and with abilities we've never seen before in any other race. They are lifting what appear to be blue steel beams by simply pointing at them and welding them into place by pointing with their other hand, and directing the light around them into thin beams of laser fire. Whatever is in Dimension X seems to have not only allowed the humans to survive, not even just thrive, but to grow stronger. If this was not recorded by a freighter from one of the companies that makes the banishment devices, I would call this a bad joke and have every crew member launched into the galactic core. But council members, this is real, and the humans have come back seemingly as living gods. No, this isn't just advanced technology looking like magic. We did every scan imaginable without being detected, and they all came back saying that the humans had zero implant anywhere in their bodies. Council members, to be honest, I fear the humans' retribution, because not only did they survive the unsurvivable, they came back as living gods. They solve multiversal travel, clearly, or at least reverse engineered our banishment devices and reverse the process. Either way, we should be afraid of them. I am just a messenger here to inform you all of this happening, and to take orders when you decide what to do next. Another week passes, and the Galactic Council assembles a fleet of world ships and star destroyers. Once a fleet of hundreds of thousands of ships is completed, they launch it to the new human world, where they were discovered. They destroy the entire planet and then force the star in the system to go supernova for good measure. Once their mission is complete, they leave the system and report their success to the Council. Five years later, a single ship of unknown design shows up over every Council homeworld and a message is broadcast across the entire galaxy even on top secret military channels, and even to races who haven't left their world yet. Attention Galaxy, this is a message to broadcast the live world banishing of every council member that attempted to banish and commit genocide on our entire human race. They sent us to another dimension where the very elements taking up what should have been vacuum will try to erode and eat any living being from our universe. Due to extreme luck and perseverance, we managed to not only survive but grow in this hellish place, we hacked into council records and discovered this was, in fact, attempted genocide. Now that we know for a fact that they tried to have us all killed, we, humanity, 
made a choice. We voted on it and decided your Galactic Senate is too dangerous to exist in our human empire, so we will now film and broadcast a live feed of each and every last one of your homeworlds being banished to Dimension X, which we are now renaming to Hell. After all, you said ours was a Hell world. It only seems fitting now, then. Enjoy the show, everyone, and feel free to offer peace or alliances, or the founding of a new Galactic Council under humanity's strict moral compass. Please, everyone, enjoy the fireworks. I myself will be having popcorn with it. <laughs> 